The Benjamin Dixon Show is only possible with listener support. Go to www.thebenjamindixonshow.com to register for our blog and join the Progressive Army. Welcome, ladies, gentlemen, and gender nonconforming individuals to another episode of The Benjamin Dixon Show. Today is Friday, September 8th, 2023. Thank you so much for joining me. We have a lot of miles to cover in today's episode from Duval to Ukraine, where Elon Musk has been accused of interfering in the Russian-Ukrainian war on the side of Russia. We will discuss that with, along with so many other topics between here and there. But let's begin here in Duval, Jacksonville, Florida, where yesterday Ron DeSantis erupted at an audience member, a black veteran, who asked him about his culpability in the shooting, the recent shooting that took place at Dollar General in Jacksonville, Florida, where 21-year-old racist terrorist Ryan Palmetter intentionally sought after and killed three black shoppers at the store simply because well they were black now the clip that you're getting ready to hear is ron desantis's response to this uh, black veteran and you will hear the anger and the rage in ron desantis when being confronted with this reality but here's the thing it's not just this one audience member that believes ron desantis is partly responsible pastors from jacksonville have called on ron desantis to end his war on woke because they believe that the outcome of a call of, of a so-called war on woke was always going to be violence listen to ron desantis as he erupts on this audience member asking him about his rhetoric and his policies that helped create this First environment. All, uh, I did not allow anything with that. Well, listen, excuse me. I'm not going to let you accuse me of committing criminal activity. I am not going to take that. I am not going to take that. So you, you should, you want to have a civil conversation, that's one thing. Try to say that I'm letting, that guy was Baker acted. He should have been he should have been ruled ineligible, but they didn't involuntarily commit him, and so they weren't. No, no, I don't. No, no. There is the truth. There is something about the truth. It's not everyone doesn't have their own truth. No. You don't get to come here and and, and blame me for some madman. That is not appropriate, and I'm not going to accept it. Again, this is why I call Ron DeSantis a participation trophy politician, because he's never had to handle pressure as a political leader. He's never had to answer real questions because he has insulated himself in a bubble of friendly journalists and friendly audience members who would cheer everything that he says. And I find it to be the height of irony that he is trying to make an appeal to the notion of truth as though he engages in truth when we have records and receipts of all of the deceptions and all of the lies coming out of this administration in the state of Florida alone. Can you imagine what this sociopath would do if he becomes president of the United States? Now, he was not being accused of actual criminal behavior. He was being accused of creating the environment that led to this violence. This white man, Ryan Paul Metter, was engaged in a war on blackness. And the war on woke being waged by Ron DeSantis is nothing more than a war on blackness. And so this would help you to understand why Ron DeSantis, when he showed up in Duval two weeks ago to try to take credit for having compassion and he wanted to get the photo ops, you know, around this tragedy. This is why his putting fingered behind got booed. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis is here. Security for Edward Waters College. We are not going to allow these institutions to be targeted by people. We- 
This is this is why he got treated that way because everyone knows the game. Everyone in the state of Florida is familiar with the games of Ron DeSantis. And so for him to treat this question from an audience member, which, by the way, is a very direct and very bold question to ask a political figure. I no doubt politicians are not used to being held to account like that. They're not used to being called on the carpet. But this is exactly the type of questioning that has to exist when you have someone as malicious as Ron DeSantis trying to become the next president of the United States. Without question, he should be asked about his role in creating the type of environment where white supremacists can march the streets of Orlando, can march the streets of Tampa, Florida. Yesterday, the same white supremacist Nazis who showed up this weekend showed up again in Orlando on an overpass with swastikas. And yet Ron DeSantis has not condemned a single one of them. When we really pause and think about the energy that Ron DeSantis just showed that black veteran in the first clip I played, have you even heard him remotely condemn white supremacists who literally support him? Nazis who wave the flag of the Confederacy, they wave SWAT stickers, and they wave the big blue DeSantis country flags. Those are his supporters. Has Ron DeSantis even condemned them once? Has Ron DeSantis repudiated them? Has he rejected their support? No, he hasn't. But when a black man rightfully asked him about his role in creating this war on wokeness that is nothing more than a war on blackness, all of a sudden, uh, Pudding Fingers gets a backbone. Oh, that is nonsense. Get, that is such nonsense. We've done more. We've done more to support law enforcement in this state than anybody in throughout the United States. Our crime rate in Florida is at a 50-year low. Uh, We have enacted... We have enacted policies so that people have a chance to live in safety. We have attracted people to come to this state in large part because we've had a commitment uh, to public safety. So the notion that somehow we're not uh, supportive of safety is absurd. And we've put our money where our mouth is. We've put uh, 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 support behind policies to hold people accountable uh, who hurt other people. Uh, You haven't seen us releasing people from prison. When they hurt, when you do the crime, you do the time. Mm. Yeah. But... You know, Ron DeSantis, I know that you are a master propagandist. I I do have to give you that. You are a master of propaganda because no one asked you about your investments into the policing agencies. In fact, when you survey black men in America, when we talk about public safety, we are specifically talking about being safe from the police. Check the Black Male Voter Project as they researched all over the country and spoke to black men about how we define public safety. It's safety from police officers. And so for Ron DeSantis to go from this man asking him about this environment that he helped create, that Ron DeSantis helped create to pivot to discussing how much he invested in police officers. Oh, that's a masterstroke of propaganda. That is absolutely top tier um, political sociopathy. And it's being demonstrated by a man who wants to be the next president of the United States. Now, to the specific accusations being brought by this black veteran, the American Civil Liberties Union of Florida supports him. And they asserted that DeSantis policies have made Florida less safe for black people. Uh, And this is echoed by the NAACP, who in recent weeks has issued a travel advisory for black people to stay out of the state of Florida because of the environment created by Ron DeSantis. And we see the fruits. We see the fruits of the war on woke, which is a war on blackness. The environment created Ryan Paul Metter who targeted black people. So many more miles to go. We'll be back with more of the Benjamin Dixon Show after this break. the 
Benjamin Dixon Show. Visit us online at thebenjamindixonshow.com. Welcome back. Welcome back. Coming up after the patron party, I will be discussing the new book that outlines Elon Musk giving the order to shut down the satellite communications network Starlink during an offensive by Ukraine um, against Russia. The implications of this shows how detrimental it is to have a billionaire who has all of this wealth and has the ability to acquire all of the infrastructure necessary to be able to make a decision, a major geopolitical decision about an ongoing war. Uh, He weighed in on the side of Russia. We'll discuss that at great length after the patrons only uh, the patron party coming up after this break. Listen, I want to go back to Jacksonville, Florida, where Ron DeSantis also made few a few comments on COVID-19. Now, this was the context of the entire press conference. He went to discuss how ridiculous it is for America to be considering wearing masks again. During a pandemic, the pandemic is not over. I I don't care how uncomfortable it is for us to talk about it. The reason it's uncomfortable for us to talk about the pandemic is because we are underneath a concerted effort to destroy public health, to destroy our ability to have collective action as a people to protect ourselves using masks, using uh, social distancing and using vaccines. We are underneath the largest psychological operation in the history of humanity and absurdly enough it's around wearing masks and the science of vaccines and we have a presidential candidate not just one uh there's multiple conservative presidential candidates who are leaning into the conspiracy theories of being anti-vax and being anti-mask i think we are moving to the stage of idiocracy where we're going to have presidential candidates uh start talking about the earth being flat because to reject the science of mask which we discussed yesterday the propaganda from cnn and michael schmerkanish and uh brett stevens over in the new york time opinion piece uh, claiming that masks were ineffective we we debunked that in yesterday's episode but we are underneath a sustained campaign of anti-science and it's being waged by presidential candidates listen to ron DeSantis as he attacks the uh, potential for mask mandates as COVID-19 surges around the country, especially in the state of Florida. And, and like, first of all, I know these people. I know what they will do. I knew that they would try to do. So now we're in a situation uh, where you start to see around the country uh, kids being kept out of school. Like Kentucky had a school closure over COVID. Um, you have forced masking of school children in different states around this country. Uh, you have colleges imposing booster shot mandates on college students still going on in this country. You have people like Dr. Fauci who are still trying to defend mask mandates and lockdowns even after we've seen all this evidence. Uh, You also see how they're treating healthcare workers. Uh, They even did in Maryland, there was a school district that had the KN95 masks required for school children sitting there all day uh, doing this. And so uh, they are trying uh, to do this again. And what we in the state of Florida will say is no, we are not letting you get away with it again. Listen, listen to the thunderous applause of people being excited about sending their children unprotected into a pandemic into classrooms, which on any given sunny day when the sky is beautiful and there's not a massive pandemic outside, schools have always been petri dishes for sicknesses and viruses. And here's a crowd of Floridians, Jacksonville, folks from Jacksonville, um, who are celebrating sending their children into this storm unprotected. The, do you, Paul, can you pause and reflect on the level of, of sociopathy that's required for you to celebrate putting your children's lives at risk for a political clout? That's where we are. 
I mean, some of these people have loved ones. Guaranteed that there are people in that audience clapping that have buried people because of COVID-19. But here they are celebrating this little man who has been opposed to mask, not the entire time, mind you. There's video evidence of Ron DeSantis supporting Ron, uh, Donald Trump's vaccine and mask mandates. Uh, so it, this is not something he has opposed the entire time. But because it has become politically viable, it has become a an organizing tool. It's become a a recruiting tool to oppose masks. Well, he's leaned in and he's taken the entire state of Florida along with them. And the state of Florida has alone lost between 81 and 90,000 people to COVID-19. I give such a wide range because we stopped counting at 81,000. That was a year and a half ago. So it's been some time. We know we're probably close to 90, 95,000 deaths from COVID-19. But Ron DeSantis wants your child to go back to school without a mask and without a vaccine. Here is Senator J.D. Vance of Ohio, who himself has plenty of problems that would suggest that he wants to lay low. Uh, But I digress. Here's J.D. Vance on the floor of the Senate pushing his corner of the anti-mask, anti-vax agenda. Children most of all need, and I'm the father of three kids under the age of seven, they need us to not be chicken little about every single respiratory pandemic and, and problem that confronts this country. We are gonna have people who get sick from viruses. It has always been thus, and the way to respond to it is with calmness, resolve, and strategic thinking, not by pretending the world is ending because what has always happened is going to happen once again. We cannot repeat the anxiety, the stress, and the non-stop panic of the last couple of years. That's what this legislation is about. End the mandates, end the panic, and let's get back to some common sense. End the mandates. (laughs) The most basic thing that a person can do during a outbreak, uh, an outbreak of respiratory illness is to put on a mask. That's just scientifically proven. Despite the anti-science, the fake interpretation of the Cochrane study that we covered in great detail on Wednesday's episode, please go and listen to that. Despite the misinformation that's spreading that has convinced people that masks don't work, the fact remains that masks simply do work. They do. Here's the only problem with masks, ladies, gentlemen, and gender nonconforming individuals. They primarily work if you are a sick person and you wear a mask. It primarily works as a way of you from infecting someone else. Now, here's why masks don't work in America. Because we are so individualistic that people who are sick don't want to help other people. In fact, we are at the stage of the pandemic where doctors... Twitter doctors is what I call them, are actively calling for parents to not report COVID sick children to their schools. Okay, so not only do they not want you to wear a mask, which works, right? They don't want you to get a vaccine, which works. They are now actively advocating for parents to not report sicknesses, COVID-19 to the schools. They want people to send their sick students to school without a mask, without a vaccine, and without reporting. This is from a doctor, so-called doctor by the name of Vinay Prasad, who uh, is a professor at the University of California in San Francisco. He posted an article to his timeline entitled, Do Not Report COVID Cases to Schools and Do Not Test Yourself If You Feel Ill. The argument is, Uh, suggests that the only way this is his his actual quote from his tweet saying the only solution left is to cease participating in the system. They see this as a form of nonviolent protest for parents of sick children to send their sick children to school without a mask, without a vaccine and without reporting that they are sick. In other words, we are dealing with sociopaths who are seeking to maximize the spread of COVID-19. And they go from doctors, actual medical doctors, all the way to presidential candidates. And we are encompassed about and saturated with an unprecedented amount of propaganda that is anti-science, that is anti-public health. And we'll discuss so much more after we get back from the break. 
go to www.patreon.com forward slash the BPD show and get twice the content and unfiltered interviews without any of the commercial and interruptions. And here we go. Very special welcome to three new patrons. Maria Joy Oliver Chavez, thank you so much for becoming a patron. Andre Morton, thank you so much for becoming a patron. And Jasmine Washington, hey, thank you so much for becoming a patron. This entire patron party is for the three of you. Go on and turn it up. You too can become a part of this prestigious and most prodigious patron family by going to patreon.com forward slash the BPD show where you get twice the content, none of the commercial interruptions, and you get access to our upcoming renewed, relaunch, and revitalized patron parties. You don't want to miss it. Patreon.com forward slash the BPD show, and we will be back after this brief commercial break. Unless you are a patron, you get no commercials. Welcome back to The Benjamin Dixon Show. Visit us online at TheBenjaminDixonShow.com. Welcome back. Coming up later in the public episode, I have to talk about this news coming out of Chatham, Massachusetts, where a 14 year old white boy was indicted for the racially motivated attempted murder of a black child at a pond back in July uh, as he shouted out uh, George Floyd, George Floyd. Uh, We'll discuss that coming up next. But first, let's go to Ukraine, where the people of Ukraine have been engaged in a nonstop fight for survival against the invasion of imperialist Vladimir Putin, who seeks made it very clear in his purpose that he seeks to expand the Ro- the, the Russian Empire, I almost said the Roman Empire, but the Russian Empire is the exact language that Vladimir Putin used. Elon Musk is entangled in this war because of his obscene wealth that he amassed as a result of being the heir to an emerald mine during the apartheid uh, South Africa. So that's how he made and got his wealth started. Um, he is now being accused in a new book of intervening on the side of Russia during a particular offensive by Ukraine. Uh, According to an upcoming biography entitled Elon Musk, written by Walter Isaacson, um, uh, Elon Musk ordered the shutdown of his Starlight Satellite Communications Network near the Crimean coast. Uh, According to the, the upcoming biography, the shutdown was allegedly in response to a potential Ukrainian drone attack on Russian warships. Submarine drones were reportedly approaching their targets when they lost connectivity and washed ashore harmlessly. Now, the existing reporting on this particular accusation did not give the specific date of this event, but this particular offensive was described as being a mini Pearl Harbor, meaning that Ukraine had the strategic advantage to desecrate Russian forces, uh, Russian ships, and that opportunity was taken away from them by Elon Musk unilaterally inserting himself into the Russian-Ukrainian war on the side of Ukraine, saving countless ships that have since been used to kill Ukrainian people, by the way. And so this this report indicates that this strike that Elon Musk prevented could have been a decisive strike that could have ended the war months ago. But because Elon Musk is the person that he is, he waited in on the side of Russia. Um, Initially, uh, Musk agreed to supply Starlink hardware to Ukraine after Russia's invasion disrupted Ukraine's uh, communications. So he inserted himself as a goodwill person, a goodwill officer, a uh, a person of good faith. But now that Ukraine was dependent on that system, it provided him an opportunity to neutralize their attack against Russia. According to uh, the biography, Musk had second thoughts as the situation evolved. He questioned his involvement in the war and mentioned that Starlink was meant for peaceful purposes such as Internet access. This is the funny thing about um, a lot of people who claim to be pro-peace right now. 
their solution for peace in Ukraine is for Ukraine to surrender to Putin. Their path to peace is for the victims to surrender to the victimizer. Now, doesn't this just fit the MO of every single other scenario that we cover? It doesn't matter if it's local politics, whether it's uh, state level politics, federal level politics or international politics. We regularly see people use that type of gaslighting where they're going to tell you if you want peace, you have to surrender to the person who's oppressing you. Or if you want to end racism, you have to stop discussing the racist. Or if you want to discuss racism, then you are the racist. It's, it's a masterful level of gaslighting. And here we see Elon Musk not hesitate to use that same level of gaslighting to intervene on behalf of Vladimir Putin. Now, all of this comes on the backdrop of a European Commission study that found that Twitter, or X, owned by Elon Musk, played a significant role in disseminating Russian propaganda about the Ukraine war. In other words, not only is Elon Musk using his wealth and his technology to actively intervene to prevent the Ukrainian forces from striking a strategic strategic advantage against their invaders, but he's using his social media platform to spread propaganda by Vladimir Putin and Russian forces. And isn't it funny how that mirrors with as soon as he purchased Twitter, the usage of racial epithets and slurs and anti-Semitism increased by 500 percent. It's almost as though Elon Musk is using his wealth to forward a very specific white supremacist and pro-Putin propaganda, which begs the question, why on earth does Elon Musk have government contracts from the United States of America? Right. So if you fully believe that this is a proxy war between the United States and Russia going through Ukraine, um, then you also have to conclude that the United States of America has no business providing government contracts to someone who is clearly in bed with Vladimir Putin. Now, even if you don't think this is a proxy war, we still should not be providing government contracts to someone who is clearly in bed with white supremacy. We should not be providing government contracts to someone who's in bed with Nazis and promotes Nazis relentlessly on his social media platform. So no matter what you believe about the war in Ukraine, I think it's clear that the people of this planet cannot trust Elon Musk. No matter how much the media claims that he's a genius, he is using this so-called genius because I don't think that he's actually intelligent but he's using his position and authority to aid and abet the enemies of humanity. Yep. Coming up in our patrons only episode, Dr. Cornell West, who I am, I consider to be a mentor at a distance, love and respect him, um, not supporting his campaign for president for my own reasons that I'll, I'll discuss in the uh, patrons only episode. But more specifically, I want to discuss the clip of Cornell West being just outright attacked by right wing commentator and conservative Jimmy Dore over COVID-19 vaccines, which ironically enough, he's, followed, he's fallen right into that same right-wing trope of being anti-science. Um, and then he attacked Dr. Cornell West over not being pro-black enough, not supporting black. Here's a white conservative man telling Cornell West that he doesn't, he doesn't care about black people. We'll discuss that in the patrons only episode, patreon.com forward slash the BPD show. Um, and again, I love Dr. Dr. West. And if we were not facing the pure fascism of Ron DeSantis, I might support him because I respect his work that much. But in a matchup between fascism and anything else, I am going to oppose fascism full stop. Come with me to Chatham, Massachusetts, where a 14 year old white boy by the name of John Sheeran has been indicted by a grand jury on charges of attempted murder and assault with a dangerous weapon. The charges stem from an incident that occurred on July 19th at Goose Pond in Chatham, which authorities have described as racially motivated, to say the least. 
According to court documents and statements from the alleged victim who is black, Sharon and other white and another white child held him underwater, repeatedly dunking him into the water despite his inability to swim and his need for a life jacket. During his disturbing act, the other child allegedly laughed and referred to the victim as George Floyd. That is a summary from NBC News 10 there in Boston, Massachusetts. Listen to the specificity of the hatred, right? 14 year old little boy um, and his friend enacting racial violence, specifically evoking the name of George Floyd. You know, there has been such a significant pushback from white America against every one of us, black people specifically, but anyone who stood up for George Floyd, the pushback is real and it's, it's everywhere. It is including violence, racially specific violence. We are seeing the pushback in the form of a tremendous amount of funding going to policing agencies versus any type of actual reforms, any type of benefits to the black community because of us doing the protesting that we did, telling police officers to stop killing us because of how obscene the murder of George Floyd was. But the response from the white community has been even more violence, has been even more hatred, has been to indoctrinate their children with even more bigotry. Because as a 14 year old, that that that's something that's taught, you know, whether it's taught to him by his parents at home or whether it was taught to him by Ben Shapiro and Matt Walsh of the Daily Wire or any other conservative. It's taught. Patreon.com forward slash the BPD show. Everyone else, I'll see you next week. The Benjamin Dixon Show is only possible with listener support. Go to www.patreon.com forward slash the bpd show and support the benjamin dixon show if you like this episode be sure to share like and subscribe